fellow ham Rich Evans, N4VS, sent me this antenna to take a look at. This is, uh, I'm guessing, his homebrew design for a field day POTA antenna. It's a vertical, comes with a bunch of radials, and we're going to set it up today and give it a shot. When Rich sends this to you, it comes packed really well in this tube, this shipping tube, and it includes a picture of how to unpack it. That PVC is just in there to protect the antenna during shipping. Excellent work. Here are the components of the antenna. First, we have the telescopic whip. This has a metric mount on it, so don't think you can put your MFJ whip onto this, the base of this, or use this on another mount. These have to stay together. Telescopic whip, about 22 inches long, uh, 14 sections, goes up to a little over five meters, so roughly 16 feet or so. Here's the base, nice spike in it. When you get it, you have to loosen these and move the spike down. There's a little a couple of rubber grommets in here. Uh, you just kind of snug this back down after you do that. These wing nuts will be for these counterpoises that come with it. We'll talk about that in a second. Comes with a 90 degree right angle adapter. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> Connect your coax too. And here's, of course, where your, your telescopic whip screws into. Also has two sets, two sets of radials, counterpoises. My guess is you want to deploy them all and then we would mount those on here between these washers and put the antenna up. So let's uh, see how it looks. Let's talk a little bit about the construction of this antenna. You'll notice, first of all, stainless steel hardware, a heavy duty bracket, and the right angle coax adapter that comes with it. And the telescopic whip goes up 5.6 meters, so it's plenty long enough for 20 meters and below. Rich includes a total of 12 counterpoises that you can spread around 360 degrees. The antenna is designed to operate 10 through 20 meters. Rich includes a picture with the approximate dimensions of how high to extend this telescopic whip for the different bands it operates. Here's the antenna base deployed and the ground I'm in I had to tap that down with a little hammer um, and it is still a little on a, a loose side, but I think we'll be okay. We fanned out the radials in each direction. I had some help with the XYL to kind of unravel them but, uh, and untwist them, but we got them out. I've deployed the antenna with the vertical fully extended. When you extend this antenna and you pull each of these sections out, they're very tight. So you've got to make sure you've got them all pulled out and fully extended. There's 14 all together. Make sure they're all out. Here's the match on 20 meters, 1.5 to one across the band. Here's the resonance of the antenna with a little bit of tweaking on the vertical component, 1.2 to one across 15 meters. I'll take that. Fire the radio up. So let's tune around 20 meters and see what we can find. Kilo 2, Charlie, Juliet, Bravo, park to park. To park to park. Roger, Roger. Kilo 2, Charlie, Juliet, Bravo, you're 5'9, beautiful signal into US 1679, Kettletown in Connecticut, QSL. Roger, the Kilo 2, Charlie, Juliet, Bravo in 1679. Roger, Roger. Roger, have you a 5 3 in the US 9935? 9935, QSL, thanks. Thanks for the park to park in 73. Kilo 2, Charlie, Juliet, Bravo, park to park. All right, come back with the park to park. Roger, Roger. Kilo 2, Charlie, Juliet, Bravo. Okay, so the antenna works. Um, we made a couple of contacts on 20 meters, so I can assume that if the rest of the bands this antenna works on, which are you know 17, 15, 12, and 10, it's just a matter of making it shorter. So I'm assuming it's going to be resonant on those bands as well. So it works on 20 meters, we're good there. The big positive with this antenna is it's compact. It's only about two feet long, which is tremendous when you're carrying stuff out to a, a POTA site or anywhere else. So my initial um, 
reaction to a lot of this is I'd make a couple of modifications to it. First thing is the, uh, the lugs for the counterpoises that go out, um, they are circular lugs. And what you have to do is remove a wing nut and a washer to put the lug on and then put it back together. I, I was just really worried about dropping the washer and the wing nut into the grass. So I think what I may do with those is just cut those so they're U-shaped and I can slide underneath and tighten things back up again. Second modification I do, especially with the counterpoises, is instead of rolling them up together, I'd roll them up separately because to, to kind of unknit those, <laughs> it took us uh, quite a few minutes uh, to get that all squared away so we could spread them all out. We've got a pretty much a 360 degree coverage of the uh, counterpoises on the ground and the whip up where it is, it worked. It worked fine. Uh, again, the other reminder is that those, those uh, sections in the telescopic whip are very tight. So make sure you pull them all, all the way out. The other thing is the, the spike when it goes in the ground, uh, at least in the ground I'm in here, I had to hammer it down and it is really, it, it does move a little bit. Uh, so I would think if it's on a windy day, we'd have to check that and see if there's another way we could kind of just get this antenna firmed up a little more. So what do you guys think? I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's uh, N4VS. Thank you, Rich, again, for sending me the antenna. It, uh, it works <laughs> and I'm certainly going to keep it in my arsenal. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. And until next time, 73 from K2CJB.